When that door shuts, there's only one way back to work. The short way. These young soldiers of the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion show how well they have measured up to the problems of airborne operation. So this is the area where the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion landed. Some elements of it anyway, right? The sticks were kind of scattered into the wind, as they say. Uh, but this was the area. Now, this is a gatehouse on private property, so I can't go in there and see in behind. But in behind is where the DZ was supposed to be. Again, a good chunk of them did land there, right? And as we know, it come to this gatehouse and set up. And unfortunately, a good number of them were killed to the German strong point somewhere in the area. I'm not entirely sure where it is. I can't find it in detail in a map. Maybe I can when I get back, but... So I was unable to find a very detailed map of the Verville area for the battalion. Uh, however, this one is in the official history and it outlines generally where they are. So you can see Verville there and the German strong point. As far as I can tell, the strong point is up around the entrance to the town, which is where this memorial is you're seeing now. This is kind of a crossroads that split into town. The town's gone past that now, but at the time, that's kind of where the town began. So as far as I can tell, the strong point's somewhere in that area. Veraville is up that way. So Veraville's just up that road. And that's where they were tasked with taking out a bridge just up over the Duvet River. More like a creek to us Canadians or North Americans. And I went over that <laughs> because I made the wrong turn, so I went up that way. It's the anti aircraft fire that uh, the C 47s and all of those took as they got over the drop zones, causing all kinds of problems for consolidating units. But the Canadians were still able to take their objectives, including destroying a bridge to stop uh, any possible German counterattacks coming from the east. So as you can tell, the wind was quite strong the day I visited the first Canpera locations. So I originally read plaque there on location, but the audio is, is not good, so I figured I'd redo it. This plaque is dedicated by veterans of the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion to the memory of six men of the battalion who were killed in this gatehouse on June 6, 1944, by an enemy shell fired from a German bunker with inside of the second floor window. It lists the names of Major McLeod, Lieutenant Walker, Acting Corporal Oakley, Lance Corporal Bismukic, Private Joet, and Private Neufeld. The Canadians, as part of the 6th Airborne Division, continued their attack until the Germans in the bunker surrendered, destroying the bridge over the Duvet River nearby and successfully carrying out other objectives in the area. The Canadians made their way to their defensive position at La Maisonel de Bevet, taking their prisoners with them. The Canadians are grateful for the assistance received from the citizens of the Commune of Vareville, and defeating the German troops. All of this area was flooded to stop any advances, so this is how this becomes the airborne bridgehead. And why they're able to hold it is the Germans, A, are holding forces at Calais, but also they can't get across through this with their armor, so that's why the armor comes in from the south. And just the Canadians, as uh, we'll see in other videos. So this is the area around here. And again, here's the aid house where a fair number of Canadians were killed and are now memorialized. Now we'll be moving on to a, another location where the Canadian paratroopers were at for quite a long time. So we have moved on to La Maisonelle Crossroads. So after dropping at the DZs, or DZ outside of Airville, they had to move here. This was their objective after they had uh, taken out the strong point, blown the bridge, and secured the area, or cleared the area. They'd come here and secure this crossroads and hold it. And they were here for quite an extended period of time. Throughout June, as we again know, the paratroopers were given the job of holding the eastern flank, particularly east of the Orn, to stop any counterattacks. Right, with the famous Pegasus Bridge and all of that, um, and the Con Canal. So this is the area. It's quite busy now. I was here in 2016. I don't remember it being this busy, uh, but it's super busy now. Well, one thing I wanted to point out is from the DZ to here is five kilometers. And in a car, that's nothing. It took a few minutes, but you know, in 
enemy held territories in the dark at the beginning of an invasion, that would have been no easy feat to do. So they had to come here and hold it and dig in as they did. There's a memorial here for the 3rd Parachute Brigade and its commander, uh, James Hill, who's quite a legendary figure, particularly uh, within the Airborne, but in the brigade itself. So you can see here, memorial to him. And then as we move over here, you have the specific one for the Canadian paratroopers. First Canadian Parachute Battalion again. And then memorial here at the crossroads. Now, when I was here with Mark Milner in 2016, he told us a story about how a couple of young guys, you know, they're young paratroopers, dug in here for a while to get bored and annoyed with things like the smells of dead cows. Uh, they thought they could, you know, climb out of their slit trenches and go across the field there, straight ahead or roughly in this area, uh, and blow up the cow to get rid of the smell. Uh, that doesn't work. It just launched the smell everywhere and covered everybody and exploded cow parts. Uh, also a story of them using a piot to take out some Germans in a house, which I can only imagine what that would have looked like, uh, in a confined small house uh, on the second floor. So again, this is the crossroads, this is the position. It's not much to see, unfortunately. It's just a memorial now, really. Uh, but again, the road is up there on the right. You can hear the cars kind of whizzing by. Uh, and that's where the expected counterattack was coming from. So we're looking in that direction now. They're expected to come from. arrived at Ranville War Cemetery. I forgot to mention why I was at Ranville War Cemetery in the first place. As I got there, as you can see in the background, the weather started to turn and I knew the rain was going to come. So I tried to get through as much as I could, as quickly as I could. And I forgot to mention that Ranville is where a large number of the Canadian paratroopers who fought and died in Normandy are buried, along with other members of the 6th Airborne Division. And here's the ubiquitous Cross of Sacrifice in pretty much every cemetery uh, put together by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, or at the time Imperial War Graves Commission, uh, representing the sacrifice given by those who died in the war. Pictured here are brothers Lieutenant Maurice Rousseau on the left and Lieutenant Philip Rousseau of the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion. Both brothers were later killed in action and are buried side by side at Ranville. Philip's date of death is often listed as June 7, 1944, including on his headstone, but he was killed on D-Day. Maurice was killed on September 20, 1944. Aside from Philip's date of death being incorrect, and I will reach out to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission to see if there are any plans to correct this error, I have discovered other fascinating details about the brothers. Philip's death was commemorated by French civilians almost immediately after it happened. And for Maurice, despite being buried in Normandy, he was killed at Ignay in the Vosges department near Nancy, France, while serving with the 2nd Battalion, SAS. I was going to cover more details about the brothers here, but I will do a deeper dive on them in a separate video, so watch out for that. And here's one of the headstones of an unknown soldier, with marked, no one unto God. So here's an interesting one. It is a B. Tuchman who served as Private B. Taylor and marked with a Star of David. Uh, some of the Jewish soldiers had their names changed to protect them in case they became POWs so they didn't end up facing extra prosecution from the Germans. 